All right. So I'm um, between you and drinks. So if you have to leave, you have to leave. I understand. I would leave too. Um, so let me try to convince you to stay. Um, the talk is Let a Thousand Flowers Bloom. Uh, what is it about? So we are here in Switzerland. And obviously, you guys, when you landed, if you landed in Zurich, you heard these cows. Um, and it's an interesting thing, because it turns out that every company, uh, typically, if they're successful, it means that they have at least one product that makes money. And that's typically called the cash cow. Right? So everybody has some kind of thing like that. But it's also a problem. Um, and, and why is it a problem? It's a problem when everybody wants to kill that cow. So we IBM, ah, I see. Yeah, I'll, I won't move. We IBM, for instance, had had multiple cash cows, and different companies have them too. But the challenge is that you want to find the next cow, uh, cow or cash cow and keep the one that you have because it's generating money, right? So you're protecting it. But typically what happens is that people uh, create the other one and you lose. And that's called the innovator's, uh, the innovator's dilemma. So that's my twist on it. But let me give you some examples. So you guys have seen me with cameras around, uh, and you know that company. Uh, and I can tell you, they dominated for hundreds of years uh, uh, pretty much uh, photography, right? But they did it with film. And it turns out uh, Kodak, if you go back to their history, you'll see that they invented this thing, which everybody now has a modern version of called an iPhone, because the iPhone is primarily a camera with other things attached. Uh, but more importantly is if you go to the history of Kodak, you'll see that they actually had digital camera. They invented that. And where is Kodak today? I'm not trying to beat on them. They disappeared. So that's what happens when you, uh, when you don't pay attention to the innovator's dilemma. Storage is also another very good example. Uh, we IBM invented storage. That was like a one megabyte storage. Uh, over time, Seagate and other companies created one uh, gigabyte. And then over time, these things like zip drives came about, right? And then now all of them disappeared because nobody cares. Everybody does SSD. So if you were a company and you were banking on zip drive and you did not try to do the next one, guess what? You're out of business. So this problem is a common problem, and I'm citing uh, a very famous uh, author called uh, Clayton Christensen at Harvard Business that wrote about this. So if you never would that book, uh, read that book, I would highly recommend it. That should be one of the business books that you read. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a great book. But why am I talking this in the context of Cloud Foundry and open source? Well, it's because I believe that we also face a similar issue in open source. And I call it the open source dilemma. And the reason I call it that way, and I think it's important, is because more and more I work in Cloud Foundry, and I love it, and I'm happy to be part of the team. Uh, I see that we have this issue, which is that how do we keep relevant when the rest of the world is trying to play in our game? Right? I'm not going to make a lot of people happy. I'm sure my colleague here, Richard, will be OK with what I'm going to say next, but some other people won't. For instance, Kubernetes is kicking our ass in some parts of it, right? Not all of it uh, in terms of cloud, but there are some parts of it. So how do we make Cloud Foundry more relevant, and better, and so on? Now, today's announcements were great because it's making the two products work better. But I would argue that we could have been there because we were there way before them. We have probably just as much talent, and we thought about similar problems. And I think part of the reason we are not there and we have some issues is because we have this open source dilemma, I think. And it's not just in the container management orchestration piece. It's in various places. Now, obviously, there are places that we are ahead and we're doing quite well. But the point I'm making is let's try to not let our cash cow prevent us from innovating. Okay? And the solution for this, uh, well, here are other examples, so Apache Struts. I don't need to say anything about that, right? Like, you remember that one? All right. Um, Tomcat, unfortunately, similarly, right, have experienced similar problems, meaning they are open source projects that have not kept up. Now, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's fine, but I don't want this to happen to Cloud Foundry, and I think you guys either, right? 
So how do we solve this problem? So here's one example, and I'm not saying it's the only solution. There are other ways to do it. I firmly think it's about let's a thousand flowers bloom. What I mean by this is every single one of you and everybody else that's interested in Cloud Foundry, when they have an idea to extend it, to make it better, to change it, to remove the guts, puts another one, because Cornelius here has a great engine that he built in Germany, we should listen to him and accept his contribution and work with him. That's what I mean by a thousand flowers, and it's a very common solution to the innovator's dilemma. So let's make that happen by embracing extending. So good thing is, uh, and again, as I said, this is one way. There are maybe other ways, and this also approach might be a problem because like, when you have a thousand flowers, some of them are going to be weeds. So, you know, how do you get rid of them? So, so there's issues here. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's a solution. So how do you participate and solve this? Because we have a solution for it. Is we created this thing called CF Extensions, which is a process and a PMC for any one of you to come to me and to the other people in the PMC and say, I have an extensions for Cloud Foundry. I have a way to do things better. And I want to be at the table. I want other people to know about it and so on. So that's the process. And we have a way for you to participate. It's pretty easy. We added uh, a project where if you tag basically a topic to your project, to your repo with CF extension, it's in a community or in other Cloud Foundry projects, then it will automatically be added. There's a list of it. I don't have time to, to show you, but you can definitely look at that. Of course, you can ping me. There's a Slack channel for it, and uh, we have monthly calls. So where's the proof? Kubo. That came out of that, right? Now, evidently, Pivotal worked with Google before and then they came to me and made it happen. Uh, and. I, to be fair, uh, they would have done it no matter what. So it's not like because they came to me, okay? So let's be honest about that. But they are the project. So like, uh, like uh, SAP has the service fabric that they're submitting. Uh, Pivotal submitted PBR. IBM did their backers. And we're looking for more. So I just listed some of the more famous ones, but there are tons more. So let's keep Cloud Foundry relevant. Uh, let's, of course, not fragment it and things like that. So I'll, be, I'll try to do the best I can. But let's make a thousand flowers bloom. So that's my thought. <laughs>